beautiful Samaritz high in the Engadine Valley in the Swiss Alps. Sunday morning and it is time for sliding on this beautiful natural handmade track. Good morning everybody, wherever you are, thank you for joining us. I'm Martin Haven with me, John Morgan, getting ready for the sixth of eight races of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. Uh, John, it's the second time this weekend that almost all our women will have been in action and that's always good news at this place. Yeah, Martin, that was a loaded field we had yesterday with the numerous, numerous Olympic champions, and it was great. And now the ladies get to come back out here again, do it all today on this historic track. I have to say what auto racing is in Monte Carlo, what Wimbledon is to tennis, this is to bobsled and our sliding sports, the birthplace. The names on these curves I'm going to describe like wall right here. 100 years ago, they put the names on these curves. Snake. This has been a lot of problems for all the disciplines in there. We'll keep our eyes on that. Sunny, to try and accelerate out of here. Nash and Dixon, this has been no picnic either. A lot of challenges there. Horseshoe, medium low lines have not been the way for speed on the bottom. Telephone. Now we go down into Shamrock. Devil's Dyke comes up. Then into the Curse Tree. Bridge speeds 85 miles an hour. The speed trap down here into Martino. Martino was the founder of the St. Moritz Bobsled Club in the early 20s. Now into Portago, the F1 guy who lost his life. What history? Martin, we saw some, we've seen some great racing. And uh, yes, Kelly Humphreys did win yesterday. And she's probably the favorite in the competition today. Well, it could be interesting today. Kim Kalicki, our points leader, isn't here. So Katty Bile, if she finishes 11th or better, will take the lead of the World Cup standings for the first time, no matter what everybody else does. 18 sleds in our field, 16 of them raced yesterday. You mentioned Kaylee Humphrey. She's back for Canada. Alana Myers-Taylor for the USA. Uh, Brittany Reinbolt not here this weekend. She's back in the US. So she got her 532 quota done by racing in Winterberg. Little business trip to Germany last weekend was how she described it. But our field, as you say, it is loaded with talent. Olympic champions almost everywhere you look around here. And an 18 sled field is going to make this very competitive indeed. So only Ludov, Lubov Czernik and Alicia Rissling didn't go in our monobob race yesterday. And this is the real deal with monobob is it's equality for female athletes it gives them two bites at the cherry in any race weekend at world championships and of course ultimately at the olympic games so we are getting ready to go that's your start list let's see how they fare Race six of the BMW IBSF Women's Bobsleigh World Cup. We're in historic Samaritz in Switzerland. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action as Russia's Najesta Segova and Yulia Belomesnik get ready to go. Najesta, last year's European champion, finished in 10th place here in Samaritz 12 months ago. And Martin, she uh, didn't have a great woman's bottle bob yesterday, but. Uh... She did finish off last season with the victory in Segulda, so we know she's got the talent. I don't see any woman's Russian team with a medal in St. Moritz back in the 2007 Worlds. You know, the only it's one you could have thought of is Victoria. Victoria yeah, Tokovaya might have been the only one, but. These are a little different lines she has today than she had yesterday in the uh, single seat sled. But there's, well, there's a lot of action right there. That's out of the uh, tree curve, I think. Tree or bridge? That might be Shamrock where they're bumping like that, Martin. Or she's the rabbit. You don't want to go first. On every other track, Martin, you want to go first. This is the only place where you don't want to draw the dreaded number one. Track record, 109.20. I mean, they're coming down 111s in the model bobs. Two seconds slower yesterday. 
Well, track is a little frosty this morning. Overnight low was only down to about 10 or 12 degrees, so it wasn't a clear night. It was a little humid. And so, like your refrigerator, when it gets a bit of moisture on it, it's going to be sticky for the runners. Nice height in Horseshoe. Bit late with the height, though. Yeah, if you look where she got, where you see the Horseshoe orange, yellow sign there, uh, you should be descending when you come to that sign, not still climbing. But uh, we don't know. We'll find out the next sled if, you know, if that, you know, was a deficiency. And we, it's a very formidable sled, too, that another athlete who didn't fare so well yesterday in the Matabob in the first run. She was pretty competitive in the second run. Had a fifth place finish here last year. Sarah Villani behind her, her second World Cup start. Rookie on trail on the on the tour this season, 5.58. So she beats the Russians, has the new start record. And these are new for every race of the season in Samaritz because we haven't raced on this particular version of the track. Hand built, usually in December. This great video, how they do it. It's they take a lot of pride in this ice canal, the oldest sliding center on the, the, you know, the original. Although there's some other people that debate that. Well, she lost a lot of time there, Martin. She had a 500s lead down to one. Still has an opportunity to keep it in the green down here, which she started to accelerate away again with the best speed. Fifth last week in Winterberg. She was very happy with her first race of the year. She was third in World Cup points at the end of the season last year, Martin. And uh, she's coming on, track record, 1300s. Yeah, she had a great year last year. As you say, third in the World Cup, third in the World Championships as well. Got a bronze medal in Altenburg. So I'm sure she is looking forward to going back there. And she beat the Russian sled by 500s at the start, 13 at the bottom. If you're 500s behind at the start, we always say you're three times that, 15 at the bottom. So pretty equal after she sat down, the two of them sat down. But Christina took advantage of the better start, and she is our leader. Look at her. Now watch the orange sign pop up. If we see right there, see, she's about neutral right there with that sign. Sarah Gava was farther on from that. But who Fifth are we to say, Martin, yet? neither one of us have yeah. ever... Neither one of us have ever di driven this track, so who are we to say other than a couple guys a couple thousand miles away? Alana Myers-Taylor and Sylvia Hoffman now for the USA. Eighth World Cup in women's bob for Sylvia Hoffman. 87th start for Alana Myers-Taylor, 16 on the brakes. But she didn't race here last year. However, she has won her last four races on this track. So among our favorites yeah, that was right pretty, now, yeah. Alana Myers-Taylor. And look at the start. I mean, for a lady who just gave birth about nine months ago, and you saw your, her athleticism yesterday, she had the best starts also. Sylvia Hoffman from Arlington, Texas, she's part of that uh, great Olympian, you know, the future Olympian. That's how they recruited her. And, you know, notice, I forgot, Martin, that she was on the slide when Alana got disqualified up there in Segolda last year, remember? Or two years ago. Yeah. Got a little bit of controversy. Well, she's, she's done most of her racing with Katie Humphreys last year, Sylvia. But back with Alana. Oh, she... 4,400 sleep. Now, this is an athlete who's won the last four times she's raced on this track. Martin, you said a number of times yesterday, she loves this place. Well, the results don't lie. And uh, 4,400s, I don't know if she can get it out any more than that, Martin, but this is quite a run from Alana Myers-Taylor. Quite a statement. Wow. 5100s. That's the separation that Friedrich had yesterday from the field yeah. in two heats. You know, and Christina De Bruyne usually is right in the hunt with a lot of Myers Taylor. So Martin, wow. That's well again a statement you know, run. And she and she's going early in the heat. Yeah, but and Christine might still be in the hunt, but again, like in the men's field, you know, you often get Friedrich, maybe Lochner, a long way clear of everybody else. 
And that's what happened yesterday again. But uh, well, some good luck. Okay, she and didn't hit there. There is, there is something special in her head about this place, as there is for many athletes. But that makes a difference, doesn't it? If you think you're going to your happy place, Martin. you you tend to be. Mark, she's not driving the uh, BMW sled. She's got a BTC there. So that's the first time she's been in a different sled. I think she was a Bodine uh, for the first for her first victory. So give her any yeah. type of equipment, she's going to win. Well, she doesn't won yet, but she certainly has put herself in a great spot. What about this young lady, Katty Bow, looking to take over the lead in the World Cup standings. She's second this season, silver medalist in Segulda, bronze medalist a week ago in Winterberg, which was a European Championship bronze as well. Yeah, she took her pace. She was very patient with putting that push bar down, Martin, because if you put it down too quick, it hits on the wall and acts like an anchor. And you know, you can see she's 1100 stout to the start. Those two long flat straights, you've got to be very patient with everything. If the brakeman's not in properly, don't move until you feel the speed building up and the pressure building up. Because any movement there, any flinch will put the sled in a skid. I'll tell you something, these two improved their start times. That's why she's on the verge of taking over the World Cup lead. And Mark, she's just pure driver and she has to be but she used to get real deficient starts martin in the first five sleds down first four sleds down she's got the second best start so yep. you know good for her to improve her athleticism at the first 50 meters which is only going to improve her chances of winning medals and martin if she does this in the second run she will be the world cup leader yep. second best right now he's only got to finish in the top 11 to take over the world cup lead so happy for her, Martin, her foot injuries. Remember, she was hurt the last couple of years. Then she had yep. problems with her brakeman getting qualified as an Aus Austrian citizen. That looks like that's out of the way. Yeah, that's done. Jennifer, the brake woman, got her Austrian citizenship confirmed just before Christmas, so she will be able to race and in the Olympic Games for Austria. So she's now living in Innsbruck and is thrilled to be a full-time member of this team. And you're right, you know, like Benny Meyer, the last couple of seasons, Katy Barr's been nursing a bit of an injury, hasn't been able to train in the summer. This year's different, and you see the difference. Next up is our Youth Olympic champion from 2016. Third race here for Lara Nolte of Germany. Silver in the Junior Worlds here in 2018. And so far, in 10 World Cup starts, she's got four gold medals, three silver medals, one bronze, and one crash. Let's see if she can get close to a lot of Myers Taylor here at the start, and she does. Only a hundred wow. back. Ma Martin, we, we look at she's already in the green, so that means they had a better entry into the sled than the Americans. Look at her look off to the left. She did the same thing yesterday in the model bob, which is a different cowling, but I guess this is just her trait. Oh, skid there. She's going to hit hard there into a snake. But she's still got 300 yeah. lead. Wow. She's looking she's around three. the side she's of the sled, isn't she? How can she be sitting so low? It looks like she's, you know, five but foot she's, nothing, but she's not. No, Martin, and she's looking dead center on the sled, on the, uh, sled now. She's hit a couple yeah. times, still holds the green numbers. Fifth best speed, so the numbers should be falling away, but they're not. She's still hanging in there, challenging Myers Taylor right here. So this, this is young athlete. Oh, there's built. the red numbers. It'd be close, sleds. Mark, within three, four hundreds. Three, four hundreds. Silver medalist yesterday. Wow. She's in second at the moment. Mark, green numbers into the speed trap. It changed yeah. in the exit of Gunter Sachs. I thought she'd be closer than that. So those couple taps that she had, I think at a bridge, tree, that cost her on the bottom. Well, Lauren Alter, Deborah Levy, second fastest start, just a hundredth off. And a few skids. There's the up skid top. into the snake. This is in the snake, some skids there. And then this is down below. Look at she's on the wrong side of the entrance into that. It, that looks like tree or bridge. Yeah, that was from tree into, into, into leap. So uh, a 
couple of mistakes, and that all of those little touches gradually take the speed out of the sled, and you see it down in the final corners. Alana Myers Taylor, our early race leader here in Samaritz. Romania's Andrea Greco with Katerina Vick behind her. Katerina, the great woman, a former German skeleton athlete. And Andrea, her second, 22nd World Cup as a driver. Gold here in the Junior Worlds in 2018. And her best World Cup result the following year, sixth place in Samaritz. She had a little uh, squirrely issues with the monobob yesterday, Martin. And, uh, one of the tallest, she's probably the biggest female athlete in the driver's seat in the competition. She had some good starts, top three starts yesterday. She got way, she got pretty buried to start today. Fifth best start, 62. She's already 20, 1800s behind a lot of Myers Taylor when she sat down. So that's pretty tough to overcome. But these are good lines, good speed good lines. Yeah, so she's not going to lose more. She's back, she's coming back, back. 4,500s to yeah. 4,100s. Still has the best speed. This is Ooh, impressive. Little she can hold that down speed. The she away. No, here she, she gets out of the finish curve yeah. without hitting here. She does. That's a good run with that deficient yeah. start time. She goes ahead of Catherine Beer. Uh, Beer, so she's the broom. That's pretty good run with the fifth best start and she has the third best finish yeah this is a track that she likes as well and junior world champion here a couple of years ago six here one yeah 2019 she's had a, a silver medal above finish the cowling, martin yeah she's, she's above she the cowling tall, a little too say. high yeah. yeah but she hey we see mel bardis get down low like he's a five foot six yeah. guy and he's six three so I, would I guess think it, she should get down. This is what you're inch. used to, isn't it? What 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 makes you comfortable maybe in the sled is is as important. Next up, Martina Fontenev. Just want to say thank you very much to Martina for her kind gift yesterday. Came back to the track yes. with one of those chocolate bobsleds we were talking about uh, in the in the store downtown. She bought for us, uh, only to discover that she we're got a in helmet fact, issue. remote commentary. Yeah, she's got to go well, without a helmet. Got to get a new helmet. Look at this. She's. What's yeah. she doing here? They're changing helmets? No. Gonna swap with Nadia Pasternak, her brake woman. So. But what's she gonna it's use? Gonna be a slight delay. Well, she'll have a helmet without a visor, because don't forget, she doesn't have to see where she's going. So Nadia swaps helmets, and hopefully it but won't Martin, be But Martin, what's the clock? Where's the clock? How, how much? Yeah, the clock is running. How much time running. they got before they gotta go? Clock is running, well, right? They have a minute, but the clock has started running. So you see Arena Strebel, her reserve brake woman, helping her tighten up the. Because if you try and do it with gloves, you're in trouble. Chris Woody there shaking his head, but keeping the sled moving so it doesn't get sticky on the ice. And you think, oh, how much of a difference well, can it make? Well, if it's worth 100, it's worth something. Well, for the brake, but no, in, on this track, because it's a natural track, there's more nat ice that comes into the sled. And that's why the brakemen always are, are advised to wear a visor on this track because of the ice chips that come in, especially when you put the brakes on at the bottom. Yeah, so, however, six, with, uh, with the temperature start. down at temperature down at minus 10 and doing 80 miles an hour at the bottom, you'll, you'll want the visor as a driver. <laughs> it'll, it'll freeze the corneas out of your eyeballs. Well, well for the for the brake with two, but hey, 600s back or the start 551 she wasn't getting these starts in the past martin only 800s back the way she drove the monobob yesterday with speed yeah. at the bottom she could get into the top two or three here if not the lead she there had a she great comes. run yesterday she's going to be the leader into the bronze medal position martina fontenev having she's a flying. really smooth run in the fast parts of the track she is like grease Ooh, lightning speed dropped away Speed dropped away. How far? Still time. How far behind? Two hundredths of a second. Right, they need to make her panic about her helmet or something before every run. That is astonishing. The, the, the panic that could have gone through her head at the start there. What's all wrong with my helmet? Help, help, help. And suddenly she just calms that down, turns it around, no panic.
get it done. What a run from Martina Fontenev. Well, that's astonishing. Martin, she 700s back at the start, only two at the bottom. Uh, game on right here. This, uh, this uh, yeah. Martina is starting to develop. We saw it yesterday in the monobob. She was also deficient at the start, but great speeds on the bottom part of the track. That's what gave her her silver medal. And I think she's starting to emerge with the athlete with the good eyes and hands. Well, this year, her results, 8th, 11th, 13th, and 14th. Next up, Margot Bock of France with Sandy Claire behind her. Carla Seneschal should be out of her isolation. She had a positive COVID test before uh, the second half of the season started. But Sandy Claire, the track cyclist, doing a great job behind her. Well, she's set to... 36 hundreds behind at the start. And that's just not fair, Martin. I mean, that's, you know, she could have the perfect run and still not challenge. That's just too much time to give up. But she drove well yesterday, middle of the pack in the, in yep. the Mono Bob competition. 77 hundreds back with a hard hit out of telephone. And don't forget, Margot has never driven on this track in anything before this week. So there were two days of training. Both of both days it snowed. Francesco Fugit was saying yesterday, every single run he's done up until yesterday's race was on a different track. So when you're trying to learn and the track is changed every time you get to it, it's tough. 111 back. Well, let's see where that leaves her. And again, it probably will leave her in the middle of the pack. But this is her first time ever yeah, in Samoa. It's only her seventh World Cup start. She's she's going to be about 15th, 16th in the pack. I as I look at the numbers here in front of us. Start when you're 3600 back, Martin. That three times that that's a second. So she finished the second 11 back. So when she got in the sled, she drove very well. But a couple mistakes there. That was at a uh, telephone. This is a skid down below, looks like a tree. And then in the finish, she makes the real mistake of hitting before the Omega finish line. A lot of mistakes like that yesterday in the Monobop event coming out of that yeah. Portago curve. Yeah, they, they're not easy to control at 140 plus, are they? Next up, Melanie Hassler of Switzerland, 22 year old in her seventh World Cup as well. And this is her first race on this track since the Junior Worlds in 2018. Look at her profile, her uh, aerodynamic profile. I like it, you know, she's got, you know, it's, it, you see, when you can't see their chin, Martin, you know, you can barely see her nose. That's what I like, especially on a super speedway like this where we're getting speeds around 86 miles an hour and you're riding a minute 10, minute nine in length. Aerodynamics plays a high premium in the sport here, your result. In the back of the sled, Irina Strabel. Last weekend was her first bobsled race in two seasons. Her previous race was Whistler 2019, so she's had a year away, back with the squad. Coming on, this is another good run. Fifth best start. She's uh, eaten into that to delay. Of course, the mountain, the tracks, it's getting a little warmer. It's, she's going to be the leader. She's got the best speed. Right to the heart. Fourth of the, the World Cup standings. Like she's she's had a great she's year, and she takes the lead. Wow. Well, this is the evolution of the track, isn't it? You know, going off third, Alana Myers-Taylor normally would be a great draw. Here she had the frost, but Melanie has Listen to, Listen to this. Yeah. Listen. <laughs> Well, she was so excited wow. to be racing here. She was saying earlier her first trip in a sled was down this track, and they said, sit up, take a look around. And she said that it was so beautiful, I just had to come back and try and, and be part of it. Well, Martin, we didn't see. Look at the speed. Look who had the best yeah. speed. Well, she's also the last person when came down. So, uh, wow, the tracks. War, you know, Tracks warm enough, faster. get a little faster. Yeah. 
<laughs> Getting the polish. So, does that help out our later athletes? Next up is Misha McNeil of Great Britain. Eighth in the race last year for the 27-year-old. World Cup best, a couple of fourth places in Altenburg a couple of years ago and in Innsbruck this year. Her best on this track in 2019, a fifth place finish. So she and Montel Douglas need a big start here. Patient, there it is, okay. 71, well, 2700's back. I mean, Hassler was only 1400's back, so. But we know Misha can drive, and Hassler just came down the middle of the track, Mark. We didn't see any skidding. This is a really good negotiation of snake there by Misha McNeil. And she's only, she's 2,800s back, so if she keeps it within 30, 3,500s, she could get a top three run out of this. Right here, 3,800s, not bad. Speed, only the fourth best speed. Skid, 4,500, starting to bleed more. It's like an eighth or ninth spot though, Martin. Doesn't have the speed in the bottom either. You know, she, she's sliding on the same runner she used yesterday. That's something we'd have to ask if we were on site. 6,800's back, only a hundredth back from Sarageva. But again, she had the ninth best start, Martin, and she finished ninth. Yep. Montel, a little ambitious on the brakes, don't quite get up to the finish line. Oh, 2012 Youth Olympic silver medalist, Misha McNeil. Little tap here before Horseshoe. That throws her into a little bit of a panic, and she climbs and looks like she gets in a little late, Martin, and you saw big, big steer to get out. That's that tap cost her going into the curve. Melanie Hasner leads from Alana Myers-Taylor and Martina Fontenev. Two Swiss sleds in the top three with our first 10 sleds down. Mariam Yamanka, the Olympic champion with Vanessa Mark making only her fourth World Cup race. Vanessa Mark on the brakes has had three starts. She's had one gold, one silver, one bronze. Mariam Yamanka, two second places in the last three seasons here, including in last year's race behind Kaylee Humphreys, the winner. Uh, 600s is her lead over Melanie Hassler. Hassler started 5.58. These pairs started 5.55, but a bump there in Snake. It's a clean exit of Sunny. Yeah, that's pretty All much controllable here. Pretty, didn't, didn't pretty much the, the norm, one. that bump in Snake. 500. She's got a chance, Martin. Second best speed. The Olympic champion didn't like the uh, vehicle she was in yesterday. 500, third best. She didn't accelerate away. She's going to need perfect straightaway here out of Gunner Sachs. A little bit of a drift. Second best speed. Could be the leader. It's going to be close. Track on track record 100. Wow. I think we're not done with track records yet, Martin. I still think there's a couple more out. There's a Stephanie Schneider, Humphreys coming yet. Don't yep. count out a Riesling get, either. It'll get quicker in the second heat as well. This is the, the snake. Everybody's been doing that. The skeleton athletes had problems there. Into horseshoe. Okay, she's diving out right after. Look at the, you can see the runners. It's slight adjustment. Second best speed. Little drift here, Martin. She had 500 lead. Little drift in the straightaway, the speed part of the track. But 
the Olympic champion, in a much better frame of mind after the first heat than yesterday in the maybe, race. Maybe, maybe she just likes two people in the sled. Next up, Brianna Walker, our monobob winner in Innsbruck. Didn't have quite such a strong race here. Yesterday finished in seventh place. Let's see what she and Sarah Blizzard could do. Sarah on tour now for the rest of the season. Their teammate Stephanie Preska uh, went home last week with injury. 61, only 600 down to the leader, Yamanka, at the bottom. Some good lines here from Brianna. Only race here Let's see what she does in Snake. Only race here before this weekend was the Junior Worlds in 2018, so she hasn't got much knowledge of this track either. Pretty good in Snake, little tap there before Nash and Dixon. See if she comes down the street. Ah, good there. High, that little, not a high, high line. 1,700 south, 11th best speed. That's not a good number. Sixth best she improved, so maybe that exit of Horseshoe helped her. The speed we see in Horseshoe is before Horseshoe, so she went from 11th to 6. She's six down here in the speed. Top six, maybe. Oh, ooh, that hurt. 3,100s back. Not bad. Not bad. She's right off of 1,400s uh, back of uh, Nolta. Yeah, that's a good place to be in, in most races, isn't it? Top six after the first heat at the moment for Brianna Walker and Sarah Blizzard. Blizzard from Canberra Eighth best start. Little tap there. This is before Monty's bolt. That's the junior start on the right. Eugenio Monti, the legendary Italian pilot that I always described as the Pele of bobsledding. Bob Slay, if you call it. A little tap. To, you know, she gets away down there with good run, except for here, Martin. She hit before yep. the finish line. All the women's model bobsleds were doing that too yesterday. Came down late and hit the wall. Next up is Lubov Chernik. Didn't race in the monobob. She's only had two races here. Europa Cup in 2017, Junior Worlds in 2018. So it's been a while since she's been on this track and two snowy days of training probably haven't helped. 69. Well, that's not as good as her teammate, Sarah Gaba, who had 63. Sits in the cowling, very nice, you know, right on the, the point, is right on her nose. Let's see what she does with Snake. Pretty good. Nice transition Get on the takeout on her terms. A little drift again there, too, out of Nash Dixon. Ooh, high line. Boy, Martin, that high line gave her the mistake. Hit the telephone, laid in the telephone, hit hard coming out. 11th best, so she's going to be in the back of the field. You know, when you make a, have a start deficiency, you just can't make the mistakes coming down the track. One second back. She puts her just ahead of the French sled of Margot Bosch. Yeah, 12 hundreds of a second. Not much in it, particularly on the track this length, 1,550 meters. So it wasn't the biggest start from Coming the late. Look how high she is boat. here, Martin. Yeah. And look late. how high she is. She gets high. Look at where the orange sign is. She's still climbing there, almost on the roof. So now she's got a Robin Hood down, abrupt down, and then watch her cross over here. Taps before telephone, into the middle of telephone, on the exit of telephone. Watch what happens here. Bang. So that mistake she made in Horseshoe still haunting her 80, 100 more meters down the track. And Van Jönhaus and Sarah Ertz now for Belgium, 14th of our 18 starters. 50th World Cup race for Anne Van Jönhaus, five as a break woman. Best here, eighth place in 2019. The 
Belgian Bullets. Hard to believe that the Belgian Bullets is like 13 years old now. It's a brand new sled. Start, that, well, she uh, doesn't get to start. She bought this over the summer. It was funded by friends and family. So, a brand new piece of kit. Nice transition there in Snake. She's got the eyes and hands. If there's ever a track that she could, you know, take her decision start time and eliminate it, it's this one. Ooh, she's up in the lip. 39 back, speed, ooh, not very good speed. But she's got the ability to take that 12th best speed, turn it into the seventh best speed in the bottom. 11th, she's coming back a little bit. She does here, nice line there. Speed, there it is, that's what she does. Good speed in the bottom. She gets out of the Portago here without hitting. Ducks her head for an extra second, 10th. In consideration, she had the 13th best start. She drove herself into a top 10 here. So I am still struggling a little as a, a legacy of the illness that she had. She had pretty acute tonsillitis the last week or two. Yeah, she's pretty acute, too high, and kissed the lip right mm. there and horseshoe. Although there's some people that say bouncing off that certain part of horseshoe, watch her in the crossover. Does she hit the take on? No, she gets on a telephone right on that good take on spot. She's happy. Next up, Stephanie Schneider, 30 year old German slider, was the bronze medalist in the race here last year with Leoni Fiebig, who's on the back of the sled again. Leoni Fiebig with two wins and four bronze medals in her 10 starts so far. And this is Stephanie Schneider's 31st race here as a 31st World Cup start as a driver. She was never on the podium Martin, here as a brake woman. That's surprising. Yeah. Look at this start, 545. Look at that. That's uh, the second best start. Well, that's what she was doing yesterday. She's looking out the left side of the sled here, too. Like I'm not, I wonder if they're leaning to get away from wall. That might be the technique why they're doing that, Mark. That's, a, that's an old, old East German trick. Oh, that was real high in the first part of Snake. Hit hard in between. Got a huge lead here. She's running late. Favorable ice conditions to come late. 1600s, lost a little back speed, second best. Good exit of the shamrock. Now she comes into the spot where you exit the forest. 1600s back, fifth best speed late there. Tree, bridge, and leap. She's still got a skid going. Still in the green numbers, 10th best speed. It's got to cost her the lead, Mark. From tree, bridge, leap. Down to the gunner sacks, the speed part of the track, she was sideways. But as I do all that complaining, Martin, she's in third place. Three hundreds off the lead. We have the yeah. Martin, the top <laughs> six, top five sleds separated by six hundreds. The top four sleds are separated by 400s, and the favorite's about to come down. We got a race. Yeah, <laughs> we have got a race. Long as Kaylee doesn't put a quarter of a second on the field. <laughs> but skidding all well, the way down here, the last part of the track. Yeah, well, Alana came so early, didn't she? But she still had, yeah. you know, she's still got a shot. Could be a very Alana's interesting second heat. Yeah, they, well, here Alana's are, got the best start, world, but Schneider right behind her. Yeah. Here are the world champions. Kaylee Humphreys and Lauren Gibbs won that gold medal in Altenburg last year. Second World Cup race of the season for them. And Kaylee won the gold medal yesterday in the Monobob as well. She's had gold, silver, and bronze here as a Canadian slider. She won last year as an American slider. 
And Lauren Gibbs won here with Start. Alana in 2016 and 2019 and won with Kaylee last year. So Alana, uh, so Lauren has got three wins on this track as well. The most distinctive look from Kaylee Humphrey. She's the only athlete in the field wearing goggles. I think she may be the only athlete on the planet still driving in goggles. None of the men we've ever no, seen a, since Pierre Luders. in the Nash Dixon area. Green numbers, low there. 400, speed, six best speed. Ooh, too high there, Shamrock. Ooh, late there. Red numbers. See what she can do in the bottom. Only the eighth best speed in the BMW sled. And and Seventh, 2400s off the pace. So, that's a little perplexing, Martin. We, we had established her as the favorite. She's coming late. Well, we said she was going to be the favorite. Therefore, that's the curse of the commentator. No question about that. But, yeah, a few little errors, as you say. A little late getting a low line out of Horseshoe. Nash and Dixon. And Snake didn't treat her well either. Right here, this was hard. This was out of Shamrock. Yeah. And then late off Devil's Dive. Look how late she Makes hangs it flip. out here. That's in the leap. Yeah. Well, so I think nobody's some perfect uncharacteristic everyone. mistakes. Absolutely right. Two to go in the first of our two heats. This is 22 year old Russian Anastasia Makarova. And this is only her second World Cup start for Alexander Yoxt behind her, the break woman, her World Cup debut from Krasnoyarsk, where so many of our Russian sliders come from. Yeah, and they're all from up there. Makarova never raced here before, so this is her first ever dry run, if you like, because it was snowing in training. So far, so good. Here comes Snake. Not bad. Better than most. The Makarova's been a winner in Monobob in the World Series, but hasn't won yet in a, a two-seater bobsled. Today may not be that day. But she's having a good run. 13th best start up inside the top 10 on the splits. Yeah, she's eighth best speed there. She had the fifth best speed before Horseshoe, so she didn't have the good exit. Slingshot, 13th speed there. Maybe too much steering, Martin. 109.05, top 10 for her first run in Samaritz in a race. It's just tied for 10. Down yeah, pretty smooth down the fast pass of the track. Yeah, tied with Katty Bile. Don't forget, Katty Bile needs 11 or better, no matter who wins. Yeah. She went out very early, Katty Bile. In fact, Makarova comes in between Bile, who was fourth, and De Bruyne, who was second off. Yeah, that'll. Both of those sleds will improve in the second run, in my opinion. And Stagiver, who was first off as well, probably will. Yeah. Well, one sled to go in the first of our two heats. This is Alicia Rissling with Dawn Richardson Wilson. Dawn making her third start, just 21 years old, and Riz her 20th World Cup. Best result, bronze medal in Pyeongchang 2017. Her only World Cup here was fourth in 2018 when she had Heather Moise on the brakes. Great start. Nice to see Reese back in the sled. It's one of the taller female athletes, and look how low she gets with her Darth Vader visor. Boy, she was had to drive a little part of wall right there. Let's see what she does in the snake. Pretty good. She She's just changed to this BTC sled, so she is learning how it works, how it responds, what it wants, what it needs. 
A low line. It's a little bit like a lot of Myers' line. 20 hundreds back. 16th best speed. Coming last in the run. Usually coming last in the run, and you've got talent like she's got. She should be better than that, Martin. But again, took last season off with some injuries. The basketball player from the University of Calgary. Three. See what you can do in the finish. 12, 5,400. She's only a hundredth behind those two athletes that are tied for 10th. Yeah, Captain Beal yep. and Makarova from Russia. So she'll have a chance to get in the top 10. That's pretty close. It's so much easier. 100. Than you can see. In Holy fact, wow. <laughs> it's so Welcome much back, Reese. You can see everything. 32 years old. She's so the oldest athlete. Lucky in the team she says everybody's now calling her granny <laughs> she said the oldest and the most juvenile is that a great combination <laughs> yeah medium low line look at the runners now you can see the runners change the direction to exit out of horseshoe look at the articulation you know split there so i think she got out of that horseshoe late here's a little bit of a drift down below welcome back yeah Still working out the sled. Well, not working out the sled. Too much Mariamia Manka knows this FES inside out. She's our leader with Vanessa Mark behind her. But oh boy, I mean, this is the kind of top group that you get when you're on a short track like Eagles, 1,220 meters, not on a long, fast track like Samaritz. Our top five sleds are covered by six hundredths of a second. So Yamanka is the leader now, but by a hair's breadth. Melanie Hassler in second, Eddie. Stephanie Schneider in third, Myers Taylor in fourth, Fontenev in fifth. What a race, that is just packed at the top of the pile. Any one of those top five could win this race. And don't count and out honestly, Aaron Nolte. Yeah, Nolte and who knows, maybe even Humphreys can get up into medals. Katty Bile needs 11th or better. She needs a good second heat here to take the World Cup lead. Otherwise, it will be Lauren Nolte who vaults to the top of the pile. And that's how our 18 sleds finished. Let's see how they fare in our second heat. We will be back at 10.30 local, 09.30 GMT. That is 04.30 Eastern, and that is in just 45 minutes from now. We'll see you then. Bye for now.